Hi everyone, uh, this is Carolyn and today we're going to talk about the leucine zipper and the interactions and forces required to sustain the leucine zipper and its coiled coiled structure. So the leucine zipper is a coiled coil of two alpha helixes uh, with leucine occurring at every seven residues, which is why it's called a leucine zipper. Um, and the end terminus of the leucine zipper is used to bind DNA. It has a particular affinity for ACGT sequence. As you can see here, the end terminus is binding to this DNA. So how does the leucine zipper stay in its coiled coiled structure? Um, this is due in part to what's called the hydrophobic effect. Essentially, the hydrophobic effect means that anything that is hydrophobic or does not want to interact with water will be pushed away from the water. Um, so the hydrophobic leucine side chains will clump together in the center of this coiled coil, so the hydrophilic outside, as we can see here and here, will be in contact with the aqueous solution because it wants to be touching the water. Um, so this keeps, again, it keeps the hydrophobic core in the center here, and every seven residues, that's going to be the leucine, it has that hydrophobic side chain, which will always be in the center of this coiled coil. So moving on, um, another factor that keeps the coiled coil in such a stable sort of formation is the electrostatic forces, other, also known as van der Waals forces, um, and a particular van der Waals force called hydrogen bonding. Um, so the positive lysine on one peptide chain is attracted to the negatively charged glutamate on the other peptide chain. Um, the hydrogen bond between the hydrogen on lysine and the oxygen on glutamate are attracted to one another because the electron-rich oxygen here has the negative charge and it pulls the electron-poor hydrogen toward it. So what that does is it keeps the hydrophobic core here in the center because these forces here and here are pulling together. So we still see this hydrophobic core. We still see all these hydrophilic molecules out here that are still in contact with the aqueous solution. Um, and we see the two charges pulling together, keeping that hydrophilic core. Now, say we wanted to substitute something for leucine, but keep that hydrophobic core. Something that we could use would be isoleucine. So it still has that hydrophobic side chain. As we can see here, there's no polarity there. There's no charge. So it's still hydrophobic, and it's still going to want to be pulled into the center of that coiled coil. Um, it also, something that's good is it contains the same number of hydrocarbons as leucine. So we're not losing any space, we're not adding any space, so it would keep it kind of uh, a bit more stable than say if we were to use valine, which also has a hydrophobic side chain, but one less um, CH3 group. Um, something that would destabilize this coiled coil would be serine, because as we can see, we have this OH group, which adds um, polarity to that side chain, which would make it more hydrophilic. So it would want to interact with any aqueous solution and it would totally destabilize that core, even with any, um, hydrogen bonding and electrostatic forces, this is still hydrophilic. So it would want to be touching the aqueous solution. Now, let's say we want to substitute the lysine glutamate, we could use arginine and aspartate. This is because we still have this other oxygen group and we have another NH2 group or NH3 group. So these two side chains would still have those electrostatic forces pulling each other together um, arginine contains a basic side group with positive charge, while aspartate contains a carbonyl group with negative charge. These two 
amino acids can hydrogen bond with each other in the same way that lysine and glutamate were hydrogen bonding here. So they would still hydrogen bond and they would still help stabilize that coiled coiled structure and keep that hydrophobic center stable. So that's it for me. Um, I have some references here. Uh, something I want to note is this YouTube video really helped me understand the coiled coil. Um, so let me know if you have any questions, if you disagree with me on anything. And thanks for listening.